Buenas tardes a todos y todas desde la Escuela Española de Historia y Arqueología en Roma. Gracias a todos los que estáis en directo o más tarde por YouTube, ya que esta, este seminario siempre queda registrado. Hoy presentamos la segunda de las conferencias, el Mesolítico en los Alpes, por la doctora Federica Fontana. Damos las gracias igualmente a la dirección y compañeros de la Escuela del CSIC en Roma, así como a nuestros colegas Miriam Cubas de la Universidad de Alcalá, Harry Robson de la Universidad de York, por organizar este seminario que le hemos llamado Online Talks. También a Mateo Benati, que está detrás, por preparar toda la parte técnica, técnica ya que sin él estas conferencias no serían posibles. Bueno, buen pomerillo a tutti desde la Escuela Española de Historia y Arqueología de Roma. Gracias a tutti que se en directo o dopo por YouTube. Hoy presentamos la segunda de la conferencia, el Mesolítico en el Alpi, por la doctoresa Federica Fontana. Ringachamos inoltre la dirección de colegi de la Escuela del Cercica Roma, y así el nuestro colegi Miriam Cubas de la Universidad de Alcalá, Harry Robson de la Universidad de York, por haber organizado este seminario que hoy le hemos puesto como nombre Online Talks. Anche a Materio Benati per aver preparato tutta la parte tecnica, in tanto che senza di lui questa conferenza non sarà, non sarà vero possibile. Bueno, Prima di tutto devo presentare Federica Fontana che mi emoziona particolarmente perché ci conosciamo da molto tempo e penso che ovviamente è una brillante ricercatrice a livello nazionale e internazionale. La dottoressa Federica Fontana eh, is professor of prehistory at the University of Ferrara in Italy. Her main research interest focuses on the last prehistory foragers groups on north of Italy, investigated through material culture, especially lithic technology, settlement strategies, and funerary rituals. She directs file works on some main late Paleolithic and Mesolithic sites of northern um, Italy. As Riparo, I don't know, is okay. Riparo Tagliente, Monte Val de Sora, Malga uh, Staulanza, and Pracomun. She coordinates research projects, focuses on prehistory hunter gatherers, adaptation to mountain environments, with special emphasis on the Southern Alps and Northern Apennines. Uh, you can, in the presentation, you can send the question by chat and after uh, Federica, I hope uh, uh, you can uh, answer, okay? Thank you, Federica. Yes, so. Thank you, Juan. So I can start uh, sharing my screen. May I start sharing the screen? Yes, I guess so. Um, Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, good evening or good afternoon, actually. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much to the organizer, uh, especially uh, to Juan, but also to Miriam and uh, Harry for organizing these nice um, uh, sections of uh, seminars on the Mesolithic and Neolithic uh, in Europe. Um, so Juan, may I start now? Yes? Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so what I will uh, try to do uh, today is to uh, to summarize uh, uh, the, the state of the heart on our knowledge on uh, the Mesolithic uh, in the Alpine region, especially for the perspective of uh, some uh, recent studies, uh, but also looking at uh, what was uh, done in uh, in past times, so with also an historical uh, perspective. Um, the, the Alps uh, represent, uh, uh, represent the major uh, mountain system uh, of uh, Western Europe. And uh, we know that uh, mountains in general have represented key landscapes uh, for hunter-gatherers uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, and uh, all this happened uh, 
uh, especially uh, we have uh, knowledge of exploitation of uh, occupation of mountain environments uh, starting uh, from uh, the late glacial uh, period and uh, so um, uh, of course uh, occupation of this environment was uh, very deeply influenced by environmental conditions uh, occupation of mountain environments is a very important uh, topic of uh, investigation uh, uh, in uh, several uh, mountain contexts, the European mountain context, context. Uh, Nonetheless, uh, we, we may say that uh, uh, European mountains are very different, they present uh, very different uh, uh, situations. And uh, this is due, of course, of the different uh, latitudes uh, and the different altitudes that uh, each of these mountain ranges may reach. Um, uh, mountains have been important uh, for several reasons, from uh, the exploitation of uh, abiotic resources uh, such as uh, specific rocks, uh, but uh, also minerals, uh, and also for the exploitation on, uh, of uh, biotic resources, which are typical of uh, mountain environments. And uh, actually, as we will see, uh, since um, uh, mountain environments and especially highlands uh, uh, could be uh, occupied, settled uh, uh, during uh, the warmer seasons of the year, this also uh, engendered uh, a seasonal uh, uh, system of occupation and uh, allowed also regeneration of the different uh, environments that were exploited. Um, another important aspect is related to the fact that uh, mountains are usually seen as uh, barriers to human communications, but actually uh, these have also represented uh, in, uh, uh, as in, in the case of uh, the early Holocene, important environment for the connections uh, among different groups. And uh, from this point of view, the Alps uh, represent uh, a very important uh, case study, uh, also in relation to their very uh, peculiar uh, position. Uh, they actually uh, they separate uh, the Italian peninsula from uh, uh, from uh, central and uh, from all we can say all the remaining parts of the continent. So especially. Uh, the, the, the central uh, uh, and northern uh, regions of Europe. Um, the alpine evidence is uh, very rich. Um, the is very rich in terms of number of uh, sites. Uh, we know that uh, um, this uh, large mountain range uh, is. Uh, uh, characterized by very different uh, uh, environmental conditions uh, which are uh, related to its uh, uh, east-west disposal and uh, so uh, from a climatic and environmental point of view uh, there are important uh, uh, important uh, differences uh, ecological and environmental differences between uh, uh, the northern and the, the southern slope uh, of, uh, uh, of, of this mountain range. But also uh, there are important differences as far as the eastern and western sides are concerned uh, in relation to different uh, geological, uh, ge geological conditions, uh, geological situations uh, of these uh, areas. Uh, so especially in the eastern uh, uh, sites, uh, um, the eastern and central sites are characterized by uh, Mesozoic uh, uh, outcrops uh, that also contain a very rich uh, uh, flint uh, and the chert, uh, uh, chert uh, while at the western sign is mostly characterized by uh, by metamorphic uh, formations, uh, um, and so uh, landscapes appear as uh, very different. Um, there is uh, so a very high topographic and ecological variability, but also a very high visibility of the record in a wide sense. 
uh, and this uh, high visibility is uh, uh, related uh, to several factors, uh, among which the fact that we have a very slow um, sedimentary processes, especially in island areas, and that the anthropic, resident anthropic impact is lower than in other areas. So this has allowed uh, um, uh, to collect uh, quite a wide uh, uh, bulk of information, especially in the southeastern Alps, also thanks to very intense researches uh, started uh, in the late 60s. So um, in this area that uh, is characterized by the highest uh, concentration of uh, sites, uh, uh, ecological and environmental uh, conditions allowed uh, uh, an occupation uh, starting uh, from uh, the, la the last part uh, of uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, from uh, the especially from the late glacial interstadial, but also from the last part of the of the ancient Dryas. Uh, but especially during the late glacial interstadial, uh, there is a, um, an expansion of uh, conifers first, and then of broadleaves, uh, and we know that uh, uh, the tree line. Um, is uh, uh, located up to around 1,700 meters. Um, after uh, our, uh, around 1,000 years of forest uh, reduction, uh, with the lowering of the forest uh, of the forest limit of some 100 meters, starting from the Breboreal, uh, there is a, a, a wide spread of uh, uh, Quercus, Tilia, Ulmus, and Broadleaves in general. And uh, by the end of the preboreal period and the boreal, the, uh, the, the limit of the woodlands is higher than today. So, uh, uh, this uh, favorable situation uh, allowed uh, progressive, uh, as we will see, progressive uh, uh, settlement of the last uh, groups of hunter gatherers. Uh, uh, into the Alps, the Alpine, uh, into the Alps. Uh, the first uh, discoveries in this region are dated uh, to the end of the 60s, of 1960s, and these discoveries were carried out uh, in uh, the Adige Valley, um, in especially in uh, a group of uh, sites uh, um, that are located uh, along the Adige Valley uh, under rock shelters, uh, which were covered by slope deposits. And uh, during uh, extraction works uh, aimed at uh, exploiting these uh, deposits, uh, these uh, interesting uh, rock shelters were identified the first site uh, to be recognized is Vatte di Zambata in 1968, and then excavated by Professor Alberto Broglio from Ferrara University. Um, and in this site, also the first uh, Mesolithic female burial was discovered uh, during these years. Um, in the following years, uh, also the, the site of Romagnano Lot 3 was identified and excavated, and this allowed uh, Alberto Broglio to identify the Mesolithic in Italy, also on the basis of uh, comparisons uh, with the evidence known uh, in uh, southern France. So it was a rather a late uh, uh, identification uh, in, the, in Italy of the Mesolithic. The studies uh, following uh, that followed, the studies that uh, Baroglio carried out uh, in the following years, um, especially on the three major sites of uh, Romagnano, Pradestel, and Vatte, were very important uh, since uh, the stratigraphic series were uh, carefully analyzed and uh, um, and uh, a series of radiocarbon dates uh, were obtained, um, and these um, 
allowed to um, to identify uh, a very uh, intense occupation of the valley of the uh, Adige Valley bottom, starting in the first uh, uh, in the first uh, the beginning of uh, the tenth millennium KBC and lasting until the arrival of the first uh, Neolithic groups. Um, the, this also the analysis, the identification and the analysis of the lithic assemblages, especially from the site of Romagnano, um, which gave uh, the best preserved uh, Mesolithic sequence. Um, this study allowed to establish the, a very uh, a very detailed uh, uh, description of the evolution of uh, the uh, Retouched artifacts, the most uh, uh, and, and typological and from a typological uh, uh, viewpoint. These sites also yielded uh, a very varied and rich uh, archaeological uh, record that included uh, osseous assemblages. Um, here you can see some 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 of the. Uh, most uh, typical artifacts uh, coming from uh, this area. Uh, the um, presence uh, of this uh, bar points, harpoons in uh, Romagnano was uh, uh, the, the, this um, bar points from Romagnano was the, the first uh, bar point to be identified, the entire bar point to be identified. And uh, um, as uh, Alberto Broglio observed uh, this is a, a typical element which characterizes the old Alpine region, which is also found in uh, the northern side of the Alps. And, um, and uh, recently um, uh, it was established that uh, the appearance of this uh, bar points uh, is dated uh, at the end of the Sovietarian and then becomes a, a, a common artifact in uh, uh, the late uh, Mesolithic, especially um, analysis of shell beads, uh, uh, marine shell beads uh, carried out by Emanuela Cristiani in several sites, uh, and uh, the um, Columbella rustica represents the most typical and most uh, widespread uh, um, element uh, in this area. The site of Gaban Rochetter is another uh, rock shelter in the Adige Valley, which was uh, explored in the following year uh, by uh, Bernardino Bagolini. And uh, here uh, we can see two uh, uh, really um, unique elements uh, coming from this site. Um, this very nicely decorated uh, spatula and uh, this unique uh, um, female uh, statue in both obtained from uh, 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 red deer antler. In the following years, um, sorry, uh, in the following years, also the first island sites were identified. Um, here we are in the Colbricon uh, Lakes area near San Martino di Castrozza at an altitude of 1,900 meters. These sites uh, were uh, discovered and at the end of the in the early 70s and then explored in the following years by Bagolini and Dalmeri. Uh, the the um, this site uh, highlights a very interesting situation with uh, the presence of uh, more uh, more occupation areas uh, around the lakes and uh, on the ridges that surround the lakes. The studies carried out uh, in the 80s uh, um, allowed uh, the two authors to uh, advanced the hypothesis that uh, the sites located around the lake uh, could be considered as a subsistence site, sort of base camps, while those located on the mountain ridges were uh, most probably hunting stands. In 
in another uh, several several other sites were identified during those years uh, thanks to very intense uh, um, prospection surveys carried out by uh, both by local amateur and uh, by uh, the university staffs uh, two major sites uh, uh, are Plan de Frea and the Monte Val de Sora. Um, these two sites uh, are um, are very characteristic of the position of the locations uh, where Mesolithic uh, hunter gatherers settled. The presence of these large uh, boulders uh, um, was exploited. Uh, uh, for uh, as uh, as uh, shelters for uh, um, for the presence of uh, um, different uh, uh, different uh, dwelling occupations uh, under uh, the blocks. So in uh, the site of uh, Plan de Frea, for different sites of the block. Uh, of this large uh, uh, blo blo mass um, have allowed identifying the presence of uh, Mesolithic occupations, while two sites were identified uh, in Monte Val de Sora. Um, a very typical aspect is the location of this site at altitudes uh, of around 2,000 meters, uh, which corresponded uh, to the uppermost uh, forest uh, limit. and. Uh, uh, these allowed uh, uh, to uh, have a, a good, uh, a good uh, visibility uh, on the landscape uh, and uh, to reach. Uh, and uh, the sites are also located very close uh, to large uh, mountain uh, passes, uh, uh, and uh, uh, these uh, uh, were uh, therefore uh, are therefore considered as excellent uh, locations uh, for. Hunting, uh, um, hunting uh, uh, ungulates uh, during the summer season. The presence of uh, small lakes is also another recurrent uh, feature of these sites. Um, and uh, in the case of Monte Val de Sora and Plan de Frea, we also um, the, there is also evidence of uh, dwelling structures and the preservation of fauna remains. We will uh, see uh, this aspect later uh, when uh, looking at the evidence uh, from the site of Mondeval. So, uh, up to the end of the 90s, uh, Broglio uh, wrote uh, uh, some um, uh, papers that uh, contained a uh, very uh, wide uh, synthesis of the, um, on the Mesolithic uh, settlement of uh, this uh, part of this Alpine area. Uh, he therefore developed a model of a seasonal vertical mobility and proposed that uh, uh, sites located uh, along uh, the main river courses uh, were, uh, were used as uh, winter settlement and that uh, these hunter-gatherers uh, um, could uh, occupy island sites and, uh, um, and then, uh, um, and then uh, displace and uh, move to island sites uh, uh, during uh, uh, the uh, summer season. In that, at that time, evidence of uh, uh, fauna remains in upland sites was just uh, being discovered, and uh, uh, the hypothesis of Braulio was mostly related to exploitation of ibex during the summer season, and uh, uh, also the definition of river systems as main mobility routes. Uh, uh, this aspect was uh, particularly um, uh, highlighted by uh, the uh, recognition, the first recognition of raw material uh, use uh, and especially uh, exploitation of uh, raw materials uh, uh, coming from uh, the uh, valley bottom outcrops. There was also uh, an hypothesis related to the different functional status of mountain sites with uh, specific locations such as lakes, uh, uh, such as sites uh, 
settled around lakes or under rock boulders that were, um, were considered as uh, uh, residential sites, so secondary base camps and uh, uh, sites located in uh, near passes or uh, on the main uh, uh, ridges uh, that were mostly considered as hunting stands. Um, Concerning the uh, two main uh, Mesolithic period, so the early uh, Mesolithic period uh, the, the related to the Sovetarian and the late Mesolithic related to the Castelnovian, um, Bagolini and uh, Broglio um, um, were um, proposed uh, that uh, there was a, a trend towards a more, a more sedentary model in the late Mesolithic and an increased lowland occupation. Starting from uh, uh, the beginning of the new century, starting from 2000, uh, new researchers and uh, um, and new studies were carried out, uh, started to be carried out uh, uh, across uh, this region, and uh, um, and uh, the study uh, that uh, we wrote uh, in 2003 with Anna Cusinato, Gianpaolo Dalmieri, Antonio Guereschi, and Marco Perezani, uh, we uh, we. Uh, observed, we uh, marked, uh, remarked that actually the uh, situation of the Mesolithic occupation of the Alpine area seemed to be more uh, complex uh, um, than uh, the uh, vertical model, and that uh, uh, the, uh, the the number of sites uh, and their very variable locations. Uh, um, were a very important uh, uh, framework uh, uh, to work with in order to um, to, to to try uh, to to to, to uh, investigate fast, fa uh, to investigate further aspects of this occupation. So um, the increase of multidisciplinary investigations uh, uh, were um, was very has been. Uh, an important aspect uh, developed in the latest years uh, with uh, new analysis uh, um, on raw materials, uh, use web traces, uh, reconstruction of reduction sequences, and uh, uh, analysis of new categories of materials such, such as groundstone tools or and osseous assemblages, and also um, special elaboration of uh, the topographic data related to the location and distribution of the sites uh, across this area. So this map, uh, this map represents uh, the distribution of the late Paleolithic and uh, Mesolithic sites uh, um, in uh, the northeastern, uh, in northeastern uh, Italy. And uh, uh, this uh, map highlights that uh, the, the first uh, occupation started during the late Epigravetian, so uh, during the, especially during uh, the temperate phases of uh, the uh, last uh, the of the late glacial, and uh, this occupation uh, in this phase uh, uh, is uh, um, is mostly uh, known uh, along valley bottoms and uh, in uh, the pre-alpine area or. Uh, the uh, areas, the first, uh, um, the first alpine areas at altitudes that are usually located uh, and around uh, 1,000 uh, uh, meters. Um, in the Mesolithic, uh, there is uh, an incredible increase of sites, and uh, uh, these sites reach the innermost areas of. Uh, of the Alps uh, and uh, um, and uh, altitudes as high as 2,300 meters. Um, here I I will uh, try to 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 show you some uh, results of. Uh, more uh, recent researches, especially in the Venetian area, which uh, 
uh, includes uh, an important part of uh, the alpine zone of the especially of the venetian dolomites uh, and uh, uh, the pre-alpine area but also um, a plain area the friulian venetian plain so we carried out uh, new researches in uh, a new series of sites uh, and as well as uh, uh, survey prospections uh, aimed at uh, positioning and uh, verifying or verifying the position of already known uh, sites. Mm, here you can see some of the main uh, sites we have uh, explored or we are just working uh, uh, in the latest years. Um, I will just uh, make a very uh, short, uh, short uh, um uh a few words on uh, on the on the plain sites here we are in uh, the river uh, in the Sile river source area which is an area located between the the high and the low plain um and uh, uh, this area uh, is known for its uh, for its uh, discoveries uh, since uh, the 1980s. Uh, nonetheless, uh, um, it was never included in uh, the construction of the settlement uh, uh, system uh, due to the fact that uh, um, all the evidence comes from uh, survey collections. Uh, actually, we have uh, started the new investigations uh, uh, with uh, systematic uh, surveys and identified uh, impressive lithic scatters around uh, uh, a wide area and also started the, the first uh, um, the first and the most ancient Mesolithic excavation in the plain uh, in the Venetian Friulian plain which gave a very interesting late Mesolithic assemblage so uh, our question was which role for the plain area um, so um, a question we haven't answered yet, um, and that will uh, that we, which will need much more data. So, what was the role of these plain sites? Uh, was uh, were they uh, part of the um, of the mobility of the nomadic system of the same group, or uh, were there uh, mountain and uh, plain groups in this area? Uh, we have a similar situation uh, in the northern Apennine and compared uh, the situation to what uh, is known in the northern Apennines. Uh, the, Ap the northern Apennines are a very different uh, mountain chain uh, uh, when compared to the Alps. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the connections uh, between uh, the, the plain and uh, the highland side meet altitude and highland sites that are located along the main uh, uh, watershed uh, seems more easy, uh, seems more, uh, more uh, certain. Um, the, uh, the, also, the distances between these uh, plain sites and the highland sites are much more reduced and altitudes are uh, less uh, uh, are also uh, more uh, are also more reduced. Um, but the alpine evidence um, is also composed of sites of Mesolithic sites that are located along the pre-alpine ridge. One uh, main example, one main case study comes from uh, the Cancillo Plateau. Uh, in this wide area, uh, which has been explored uh, since more than 20 years uh, by Marco Perezani and more recently uh, with the new uh, site by Davide Vizentin. Uh, several uh, sites, especially referred to the late Epigravetian and the, and the early Mesolithic Sovetarian phase, have been uh, identified. And uh, also uh, a very interested, interesting cache, uh, third nodule cache in uh, the Palughetto uh, site. So this uh, indicates uh, that uh, even this mid altitudes uh, at around 1000 meters in the pre-alpine area uh, still represented a very important environment uh, for the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers.
and uh, new also um, new seasonal uh, studies carried out uh, in a uh, um, newly investigated site uh, the Galgenbühel uh, site by Ursula Wierer uh, and his colleagues um, also led to um, other important uh, um, data um, this uh, series from Galgenbühel is uh, uh, especially uh, dated uh, to the middle phase of the Sovietarians, so occupied uh, during the middle Sovietarian. And uh, its uh, recent excavation allowed a very careful collection of old fauna remains and, uh, um, and uh, seasonal studies uh, highlighted uh, a preferential um, late spring and uh, uh, summer occupation of this site. Actually, new, new studies are in progress uh, um, concerning the conal remains also from the sites of uh, Romagnano, uh, Vatte di Zambana and, uh, and uh, Pradestel, carried, by, uh, carried out by Muse, uh, by Alex Fontana. So we will have uh, um, also new data on the seasonality of these sites, which is also another important aspect. As far as uh, lithic technology is concerned, uh, um, some, some recent studies have uh, concerned uh, the, the lithic assemblages from uh, uh, the site of uh, Romagnano, both the Sovetarian and uh, the Castelnovian assemblages. And uh, through these studies, uh, um, uh, we, uh, there was evidence that uh, this transition uh, may be considered uh, um, a sort of a progressive transition with uh, uh, evidence of introduction of the new napping techniques, uh, especially in punch technique and the pressure, uh, but uh, with uh, the application of uh, uh, management uh, system of the core volumes that are uh, in some cases that are uh, in continuity with those attested for uh, the, the early Sovietary, for the Sovietary, so for the early uh, Mesolithic. And new studies are in progress uh, uh, concerning the manufacturing of uh, uh, arrowheads, especially of trapezoidal armatures. In the most uh, recent years, uh, starting from uh, 90, uh, 20, uh, 2000, sorry, 11, we also uh, started the new survey investigations uh, in uh, the area of uh, San Vito di Cadore, uh, in uh, what we call the Total Archaeology Project uh, that was carried in collaboration by the universities of Ferrara and the Trento. And, uh, a very wide, uh, a lot, I mean, several uh, sites, several Mesolithic uh, uh, sites, uh, or, or anyway, several sites characterized by the presence of lithic scatters were uh, uh, relocated in several cases. And uh, this led to an analysis of uh, uh, these uh, sites. And also to, uh, to, to, to see that uh, uh, Mesolithic occupation in this area was uh, continuous. Uh, um, this occupation started, um, as we will see, in the late uh, Paleolithic and uh, continued through the early Mesolithic, the Sovietarian, and the late Mesolithic. So uh, according to the evidence from this area, uh, the, the, during the second Mesolithic, uh, there was a continuity of occupation of highland territories by Mesolithic groups. Uh, this uh, were, this uh, research also led us to, um, to investigate uh, aspects uh, related uh, to the mobility of um, hunter-gatherers, Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, and uh, uh, the location of uh, the identified sites on uh, the main ridges at the mean altitudes of around uh, 2,000 meters allowed to, um, to uh, confirm that uh, mobility occurred uh, in these areas, uh, um, occurred uh, uh, 
um, occurred uh, um, by um, moving uh, um, um, across these uh, uh, ridges that allowed a good visibility over the territory and uh, also um, also um, 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 a very a very and also to um, uh, to uh, reduce uh, uh, the uh, energy uh, um, necessary uh, to move around the mountain areas. And this uh, results uh, correspond to, to the same uh, the results that were obtained by, uh, sorry, uh, it's very difficult to keep the PowerPoint. Uh, so um, to by compatriot and compatriot in the Adige Valley uh, river system. One of the most important sites in the Belluno Dolomites is Monte Val de Sora. Uh, this site was uh, investigated starting from 1986. Uh, the site has yielded uh, very, very rich evidence uh, from two main sectors, uh, sector one and uh, sector three, uh, with uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, artifacts. Uh, lithic artifacts and a very good preservation of organic remains, uh, um, included the bone, os bone fauna remains, uh, um, charcoal remains, uh, and as we will see later, uh, and a very uh, well preserved Mesolithic burial. So, this site was very important for the reconstruction of upland occupation by Mesolithic groups. Um, the presence of uh, dwelling structures was identified, uh, uh, and uh, um, and uh, the analysis of the faunal assemblages uh, um, was also very important since it uh, uh, it uh, uh, allowed to identify the uh, the presence of different species uh, and. Uh, uh, which were dominated uh, not only by ibex but also by red deer. So a uh, hunting red deer was a major uh, issue of uh, this uh, occupation. And um, red deer are known for uh, their uh, migratory uh, migratory uh, behavior to high altitudes uh, during uh, the uh, summer season. So the, um, this base camp uh, uh, was highly specialized in hunting since most of the uh, uh, retouched assemblage is uh, composed of uh, uh, microlithic armatures uh, with very high percentage of impact fractures. The um, analysis of uh, lithic raw materials uh, allowed uh, to highlight uh, a very um, uh, the use of uh, local resources, but uh, also exploitation and especially uh, dominating exploitation of the uh, church from uh, the Piave Valley, uh, from the Piave Valley bottom, and also uh, the presence of uh, uh, rock crystal artifacts uh, from the inner Alps, uh, which are important elements for highlighting. Uh, um, in, in the um, importance of, uh, uh, of these high um, altitudes uh, environment for connections of uh, human groups. And uh, concerning uh, this aspect of connection, one uh, important site in uh, the um, Austrian Alps, in the Stubai Alps, is Ula Felsen, uh, investigated by uh, Dieter Schäfer. And uh, who's uh, and um, and where uh, raw materials were analyzed by Stefano Bertola and have highlighted the presence of uh, groups uh, with uh, typical uh, Sovietarian technology uh, coming from uh, the southern Alps and uh, reaching this site uh, in the early Sovietarian, followed by groups uh, with the Buronian technology bringing uh, together their their uh, gear. Uh, made on uh, um, flint uh, and church from the northern uh, Alpine area and the Bavarian area. Um, coming back to Mondeval, um, a very one of the most important discoveries in this site is represented by the burial of uh, this well uh, preserved male individual 
uh, which was excavated in 1987. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, accompanied by an incredibly rich uh, uh, gravewood assemblage uh, composed of uh, three main uh, grave goods, uh, grave goods uh, um, uh, sets, um, red deer atrophic canines, uh, while the two bone holes covered were probably used to to um, to close a shroud, and the three large blades were located under the head and above the shoulders of the individual. Some I we we of course we do not have time to analyze the, all the elements, but uh, uh, that come from this important burial and uh, which were recently published uh, but i will i would like to focus on some of these items which are particularly uh, interesting for highlighting aspects that may be related to social uh, changes uh, among the last uh, among the groups of uh, the, the 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 recent mesolithic of the castelnovian groups um, especially these three large blades located uh, near the head of the individual, which were, were obtained with the, the punch technique, and one was also showing evidence of uh, uh, working uh, um, vegetal materials. And uh, uh, a group of uh, cores uh, that were part of the same um, uh, cores and a series of blades that were part of the same uh, great good assemblage were probably preserved into a leather bag that had disappeared. Um, it's interesting to observe that while uh, large blades uh, were produced by uh, punch techniques, a uh, punch technique, uh, the small uh, bladelets so the small uh, bladelet cores uh, show evidence of application of pressure technique. Um, so the two techniques were applied to two different categories of blades and bladelets. Um, the large blade, the large blades are absolutely uh, a very um, uh, important aspect, especially the three one, the three that were located near the head, uh, which have uh, dimensions that are absolutely not found in the habitation levels of Castelnovian sites in the Alpine region. And another important aspect is related to the provenance of these raw materials, um, which come from distances of over 100 kilometers uh, from the site of Mondevalle, and uh, whose determination was carried out by Stefano Bertola. So both from uh, the Baldinon area and the Lessini, Baldo Lessini area, as well as from the Friulian High Plain. Um, and uh, another important aspect is represented by the presence of uh, four antlen tines, two of which uh, bear traces of having been used as the tools for uh, flaking, um, either by pressure or by uh, punch technique with the compression traces uh, and uh, also traces uh, in the functional part. Um, another interesting uh, object is represented by this harpoon, which is the only uh, the, the second entire harpoon with the one of uh, Romagnano. Uh, and all, uh, despite this reconstruction of this harpoon used uh, as a spare, um, Emanuela Cristiani uh, established that this harpoon was most probably used for fishing. So uh, what about uh, this uh, this uh, funerary ritual? Uh, so this funerary ritual has some aspects in common which underlines long-lasting traditions in the Alpine region with uh, the burial of a Villa Bruna rock shelter uh, dated to the late Epigravetian. Uh, this burial is also characterized by the presence of a great good assemblage uh, located near the left arm of the male individual, which contains items such as blades, uh, bone points, and a lamp of resins and propolis as the one of Mondeval de Sora, a core, a retoucher. Um, but uh, there are, but the, the burial of Mondeval de Sora also presents uh, also 
um, some some uh, new symbolic elements uh, which are seen especially in the, the in the blades that are located near the head so we uh, propose uh, um, that this uh, that, 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 that this new symbolic role uh, given to blades and the association of uh, uh, cores blades and napping tools uh, um, could um, could uh, and which is an aspect that will be found uh, the presence of these large blades uh, in uh, the Neolithic burial grounds of the top lane uh, some uh, centuries later uh, may be a new attribute for male individuals uh, uh, with a recognized uh, prominent social position or an attribute for maybe for specialized uh, uh, nappers. This uh, role of uh, actually the role of uh, large blades, uh, which was uh, present in uh, uh, earlier uh, burial uh, uh, context, like uh, the, the famous uh, young prince of Arene Candide, um, is no more present in the late Epigravetian and is uh, uh, once again we, we, we find these large blades uh, with the development of uh, the new uh, pressure and uh, punch techniques in the Castelnovian in the burial of Mondeval. So we think this may have a very uh, an important uh, symbolic and uh, social value. Um, um, this uh, proposal was uh, this is a, a new an hypothesis that we proposed in uh, uh, two recent papers. One was uh, in the Mesolithic burial proceedings uh, uh, held in Halle, and uh, uh, more recently in uh, Plus One, uh, published in Plus One. Uh, last, uh, the last two slides are dedicated to new uh, newly investigated uh, sites. Uh, Casera Staulanza. Um, Casera Staulanza is a new open air uh, site in uh, the Dolomite area. Uh, this site is located 1,700 meters uh, and uh, it has been explored until uh, 2018 over a surface of 33 square meters. Um, the most interesting aspect, uh, one of the most interesting aspects of this site is uh, related uh, to, uh, to the fact that it is dated to the late Epigravetian. So it represents an evidence of a uh, very early, um, very early arrival of this group uh, in the Belluno Dolomites at uh, the, uh, this altitude, very close to the to a large um, Dolomite pass, Staulanza Pass. And uh, uh, the last, uh, um, our last investigation started two years ago in the site of Pracomuna in the Jao Pass area. Uh, the, the site of Pracomuna is, uh, oh, sorry. I'm really sorry, but slides are uh, are um, advancing uh, very late, and uh, so it, it's big of the problem. Sorry. Um, okay, the, I, I will not show you. That. Okay. Uh, it's, Sorry, uh, okay, we will try to go to the conclusions. Uh, I wanted to show you also the slide with the, the Pracomun site, a new site that we are investigating since 19, uh, uh, since 2000, sorry, uh, 19 uh, in the area of the Jao Pass, but it's not possible to see that slide. I'm very sorry. And uh, this is a new early Mesolithic site, and there are uh, located under a large boulder, so in very similar situation to as the site of Monteval de Sora, and uh, and uh, with also a, a rather good preservation of organic remains, so the presence of uh, faunal uh, preservation of faunal remains. Uh, to sum up, um, so what may we uh, what 
uh, we, we may say that uh, the last two, uh, 20 years of investigations have led to a new uh, interesting hypothesis on the Mesolithic occupation of the island of the, of the Alpine area. So this uh, highland occupation and inland penetration in the southern Alps started earlier than previously thought. Um, that there is a continuity uh, in island occupation uh, uh, during the late Mesolithic, so from the late, from the early Mesolithic to the late Mesolithic, and uh, that the presence uh, of uh, lowland occupation, so in the Venetian Friulian plain, starts in the early Mesolithic. So there is a continuity in the settlement uh, of uh, this area both in the plain and in the highlands, although uh, no, no, there is no evidence so far of highland occupation in the early Mesolithic, uh, sorry, in the early Neolithic, sorry. Uh, mobility uh, of Mesolithic groups uh, is strictly uh, connected to the main river systems that allowed displacement from lowlands to highlands and to the main uh, alpine ridges uh, when uh, these groups uh, reached the upland areas, especially in the early Mesolithic. Uh, Sovietarian technology allowed the exploitation of uh, local resources and the local uh, churches, uh, while there seems to be a higher the, a selection of higher quality rocks uh, in the late Mesolithic. And uh, the shift to the late Mesolithic seems to be a, a phenomenon of inclusion of uh, these new technologies that involved uh, the local groups, uh, but also engendered some possible social differentiations with uh, uh, possible craft specialization and the development of a more logistical system. Uh, nonetheless, the general settlement system in the area has not been defined yet, and especially um, whether there were plain and mountain groups, so people living in the Alps and people living in uh, the plain, or a unique settlement system. Um, so um, uh, this is uh, to uh, so to uh, all this research was carried out under. Uh, the, uh, with the permission of the, minister, of the Italian Ministry of uh, Culture and uh, thanks uh, to the financial support of uh, several local uh, institutions and, uh, and, some, and the evidence from the Belluno Dolomites and the, the burial of Monte Val de Sora are presently uh, on display in uh, the uh, Museo di Torino Cassetta of Selva di Cadore. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Grazie, Erika. Hope it was clear enough. I'm really sorry because my slides were uh, were shifting very, very slowly. So. <laughs> Possibly the PowerPoint is very is very uh, heavy, so it's due to this. No, not at all. It was it was brilliant. I thought it was very clear, uh, and uh, as I said in the introduction, I'm I'm not an expert, unfortunately, on uh, the Italian Mesolithic, so that's really improved my knowledge. So yeah, thanks. I've, I've got a couple of questions actually, just to kickstart the discussion. There's two questions in the discussion and hopefully there'll be uh, some more which might trickle in, but I thought to at least ask, ask some questions. So uh, the burial with the, uh, with the lithic blades, uh, the one which you did the uh, geological provenience of, uh, provenience and of, you said that the source of the, uh, the flint was 100 uh, kilometers away. Do you think the, the people have moved or the objects have moved? And I just thought, uh, perhaps, have you done strontium isotope analysis of the, the tooth, which might be able to, again, demonstrate mobility of the humans? Of course, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so, um... It's uh, what we believe uh, actually is that uh, 
the presence of this high quality raw material. So the uh, the, the different sourcing, um, the different sourcing with respect to what we see in the earlier Mesolithic in the same site from habitation, uh, where we have a, where we mostly have uh, resources from uh, the Adige river system, so from the local uh, river system, may be related to higher specialization. Uh, in uh, clean napping that developed in relation to the adoption of uh, um, punch technique and pressure technique. Um, our hypothesis is that this man could be a specialized napper and that probably most of these uh, chairs were, uh, were um, provisioned uh, by himself. Nonetheless, we do not have any other evidence of this because we could not carry, uh, we didn't carry a strontium analysis yet. We carried uh, uh, carbon and nitrogen analysis. Um, we have, uh, we have um, uh, scheduled to carry out uh, strontium analysis for the future, but it's not done yet. So we hope to do in the future. Uh, it would be a very interesting element to add um, and also, uh, this we do not have uh, any ADN analysis for this individual. Some ADN was was tried in past year, but gave no results. So um, we will try again. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, another question I had then. Uh, I noticed in several of the of the slides you had these ornamental uh, perforated. Uh, I think the marine shells from the Adriatic coast or, uh, or the Mediterranean. Are there any sites with perforated uh, cyprinid pharyngeal teeth? Because there are quite a few examples in the Danube gorges, yeah. uh, as well as other areas higher up in the Danube in Germany. So um, are there any examples in Italy? No, as far as I know, we do not have. As you know, um, Emanuela Cristiani is a specialist of this, so she uh, she has studied uh, the um, ornamental beads from from several uh, sites from this area. What we have, so we do not have these kinds of beads, but what we have is a, a kind of uh, beads uh, uh, made on uh, on um, uh, on uh, not sea water, but uh, um, shells, but uh, um, terrestrial shells, or um, um, and and uh, I don't remember the name of the species now, but that appear uh, in the site of Biarzo, uh, which is uh, farther east. To Montval, and we just find a new, a new uh, item last year in the new sites we are excavating, and these are attested also in the eastern area. So this could be an element of connection with the, the eastern Adriatic. Okay. Yeah, there are some sites in particular, uh, let's say, traditions which do seem to have quite a a big geographical spread. Yeah, Columbella rustica are the most Boston. widespread that yeah. replace the Cyclope shells that, or Trivia, Trivia that were more widespread in uh, the late Paleolithic in northern Italy, and they are uh, replaced by this Columbella, especially in this area um, of uh, Columbella is rather widespread all, all over the Italian peninsula, but it's, we have uh, the, it's the most represented one in northeastern Italy, uh, where it replaces the chick of the shell. Mm. Okay, we've got a question in the chat as well, which is something I was also going to ask. <laughs> which was, uh, so the question is, could some of the mountain locations have been used as a lookout for animal migrations during the warmer months? And, and that kind of also connects with my question, which was, were the highland areas occupy, uh, occupied in the, say, colder months of the year and the lowland areas in the warmer months of the year? Because, I mean, this is a question which does surround uh, the Mesolithic in general and throughout Europe. I mean, people have suggested that's also uh, the case 
for instance, at Star Car, where that was occupied during the summer, and then the uh, the hunter gatherers would then move up into, say, northern North Yorkshire, uh, as well as other regions of the UK, the higher ground. So I just thought, what's your take on that? Is is that something possible, or is there any evidence to suggest that? So uh, yeah, what we know is that uh, highland locations that are uh, especially uh, island locations uh, in the inner Alps um, uh, that are mostly attested around 2000 meters are actually um, seasonal uh, seasonal uh, camps occupied during the warmer season. This is also confirmed by seasonal studies just carried out in Monte, in Monte Val de Sora and Plan de Frea. Um, and uh, this is also rather obvious due to the uh, fact that uh, during the winter season, these areas are covered by one or two meters mm. uh, snow. And um, so this doesn't surprise us. And also the fact that this could uh, represent a, a very, uh, a very important areas for uh, serving the territory and the migrations of animals, especially uh, red deers. And today, uh, still today, hunters, I mean, in, in, in um, people in the, the local valleys uh, uh, used to uh, hunt uh, uh, red deer uh, at the, the end of the summer. <clears throat> and uh, this also could be complemented by the presence of other species like ibexes or chamois that uh, live over the, the tree line. Uh, as for uh, as for winter location, this there is a I mean I think the pro there we do not know some some I mean it's still a, an open problem uh, since uh, as far as we know from uh, one main site Galgenbuehl this site was especially occupied during the summer and the spring too uh, and especially in relation to the exploitation of wet environment species since the, both the Adige and the Piave River, which are the main rivers of the area, were characterized by uh, large uh, areas of uh, still waters and, uh, so, and, um, and uh, also rivers. So um, especially Galgenbrühl gives us a very uh, clear idea of how much uh, the, impor of the importance of fishing, uh, especially Cyprinus, Cyprinids and uh, and exos. I don't I don't remember in English exos lucius is the, the, the pike the pike. Thank you and the pike um, and also um, and also um, Malo's uh, collection. So it's very important uh, from this point of view and with the seasonality. But other sites are in course of exploration and then. Uh, so far, most sites in the valley are located under rock shelter. So I'm not so sure that these locations could really be excellent for living uh, all year round. Uh, for example, in the Piave Valley, we have very interesting sites on the river terraces, open air river terraces. As we and uh, also we should consider the option of the. Uh, the, the plain sites that are located between the high and the low plain, like those in the river source area. Uh, and these are exceptional locations for the richness in uh, uh, damp, uh, damp areas, so very, uh, very varied uh, ecosystems uh, offering a lot of resources and possibly uh, good locations for aggregation sites or something like this. But unfortunately, the evidence there is really very poor and just represented by uh, lithic assemblages. And mm. moreover, we have also sites towards the Venice Lagoon. And uh, we also should consider that the Adriatic coast, at least in the pre-boreal and boreal, was still uh, uh, south, south, uh, in a southernmost position than today. So some sites could be also of course, um, covered by the sea today. So the reconstruction of the uh, yearly nomadic uh, uh, system is not so easy to, to, to be uh, certain on the mm. base of the evidence we have today. So we, okay. will, we would like to work on this aspect 
to continue working on these aspects in the coming years. Great, thanks. And that you've answered one of my other questions about whether or not these uh, rock shelters were short-lived or year-round occupation sites. And as well, you've suggested, probably short-lived is, uh, well, is probably the case. Oh, we've got we've also got another question from Jenny on the chat, and she has said, "Has the uh, the dental analyses that's been." done on the uh, dietary differences between the last foragers and first farmers at Grotta uh, uh, Continenza. 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 Oh, Continenza. Continenza. Uh, has that changed how the data from the Alps has been looked at? On the back of... Oh, um, in the Alps, uh, I mean, uh, we do not have uh, the. Um, in the Alps, uh, we do. We have a sort. I mean, um, not a real gap, but a very few evidence of early Neolithic occupation. So the evidence of uh, ne early Neolithic uh, is uh, limited to some valley bottom sites, especially in the Adige Valley, and. Uh, um, we do not, uh, we, we, and the evidence of burial grounds is very limited and mostly, um, uh, mostly um, concerns uh, the middle Neolithic, uh, med middle Neolithic. Uh, so uh, so what, what we know uh, is that uh, the arrival of uh, Neolithic, the development of Neolithic in the area must uh, had uh, quite an important impact on the occupation on this area and really determined uh, a change in the occupation uh, since mountain environment really highlands were uh, abandoned for uh, some uh, for a for a period of time we, until at least. Uh, the middle Neolithic or advanced middle Neolithic, uh, and so, but we have a very clear occupation. I'm not the best person to to speak about this. We have a important occupation in the plain uh, and uh, in the in the valley bottom and in the in the wide pop northern four plain and the Venetian and Friulian plain of several important early Neolithic sites. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. I think that's uh, that's covered that question. Uh, there are two more questions as well. One's just from uh, Graham Warren, who says, "Thanks very much. That was that was a great talk." Uh, and he says, "Can you say anything about the future of these sites and landscapes? For example, are there any threats from, say, climate change, economic tourism development, or vegetational change?" Oh, thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, you, 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 um, uh, perspective think... for the future. So, uh, in uh, you mean does he mean does he mean in uh, the I mean in the present in the exploitation of this evidence or the future scientific in, in a scientific sense? Actually, I didn't catch the oh. the real. Do you think? I think it's more to do with the preservation of the the sites in the okay, future and whether. You know, uh, yeah, climate change or okay, tourism okay. development will affect it. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, so the problem of site preservation. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, we have a hundred, hundred sites in the house. The map I showed just uh, showed the. Uh, just uh, I mean reported the the main sites those that have been the object of uh, um, uh, ex excavations or just uh, or uh, or trenches, uh, but we have uh, uh, several surface uh, finds, and uh, some of these finds are have been uh, subject to erosion processes. Uh, so this is a very delicate, uh, uh, delicate, uh, very rich uh, heritage, but also very delicate heritage. Um, uh, the, I mean, uh, even uh, excavation in this site is quite dif difficult uh, from one year to, to the other. 
uh, and uh, because uh, the preservation of the archaeological layer is uh, subject to, to, to different uh, uh, phenomena. For example, in Mondeval, we have a still part of the, uh, the, the, the archaeological series in place, but it's going to be destroyed by marmots. Marmots mm -hmm. all <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> this is a very, it's strange, but it's, it's like that. And um, anyway, anyway, I think mountain archaeology has a lot of things to say, and especially um, concerning the hunter-gatherer groups. So it's a very interesting aspect, and we are trying to to stimulate local uh, local um, local institutions to to protect uh, these uh, rich evidence and also to to promote it and uh, to to develop uh, uh, networks for its uh, promotion and its knowledge uh, for one one of our proposal is uh, to to create a sort of a, a path uh, uh, of um, for tourists to 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 visit the different locations, although there are very few things to, to see, but there are land, nice landscapes and a lot of things to, to discuss about why these people were here or there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, their economic activities, their social connections, etc. Okay. Anyway, climate uh, is I, I mean, in in uh, these islands, uh, we we do not have to do with glaciers, uh, so it's uh, I mean open areas, um, and uh, there are uh, some uh, geological problems, but not really so 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 important so far. Right. Thanks. I, I know for a fact. I think uh, Graham at the. The Mesolithic conference last year, the one online. Yeah. Uh, I think he gave a presentation on sort of, I think it was Mesolithic in Alpine or at least Mesolithic in yeah. mountainous regions. And so yeah. no doubt Graham will be in touch if, uh, if he needs anything. I have got a suggestion, perhaps you should put your name forward for uh, one of the next Mesolithic in Europe conferences and then you can take us all across the Alps and we can visit all these sites. Yeah, the, the next Mesolithic in Europe yeah. will be in Ferrara, so uh, there uh, we. It. it will be. It will be, <laughs> and it will be very nice to organize uh, some nice excursions to this site. We we organize a Mesolife conference uh, um, with uh, Ursula Virel and Davide Vicentin uh, in uh, Selva di Cadore. Uh, that was a small uh, Mesolithic conference dedicated to people. I mean, to, to the Mesolithic in the Alps and the, and the, and the, um, uh, surrounding areas. And uh, we could do a nice excursion to the site of Mondeval. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> and there's a couple of more questions actually coming through. Uh, a lot of people are saying thank you very much. Uh, it was a great talk and very interesting. Uh, Mattia Maurizio, I think, has asked the question, thank you very much for the interesting pres pres uh, presentation. Were the teeth of the individuals from Mondeval de Soro and Villa Bruna analyzed for ASUDAS data? I'm not sure. The, the tooth, the teeth, he's oh, talking okay. about the teeth, the yeah. human teeth. Uh, there were uh, analysis of the human teeth uh, um, uh, related, so we, there were, uh, uh, so uh, concerning Mondeval. Uh, so there were different analyses on the teeth from the two individuals. Um, uh, so uh, one recent paper also analyzed, uh, yeah, the uh, Mondeval and also the, the dental calculus uh, from Mondeval de Sora. It's uh, published in a, it's a recently published paper. 
um, uh, related to the I can send I mean if this person writes me I can I can send him uh, the, the reference uh, and okay uh, yeah. I don't remember. I think there is also the Villa Bruna site was reconsidered in this publication. Yes, yes, if I remember well. So uh, if you write me, I, I can send you the, the reference of the paper. Yeah, I've just written a note. That's that's great. Thanks. And there's another question as well. Uh, Bonazzi has asked, is there a Neolithic in Adesia Valley and where exactly? Neolithic. Neolithic. Yeah. Okay, I'm not a specialist of the Neolithic, uh, but um, of the late Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, so I'm not the best person to do. But anyway, yeah, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the early Mesolithic, uh, there are very important early Mesolithic sites in the valley. Uh, one site, uh, uh, one of the main sites is uh, Gaban Rock Shelter which is uh, what was first excavated by Bagolini and now by Anna Luisa Pedrotti. Uh, there are some published works on this site with a, a Mesolithic sequence and an early Neolithic sequence and a Neolithic sequence. It's very interesting with incredibly preserved, well preserved uh, also uh, bone assemblages from this site. Um, it's a large rock shelter and um, the um, archaeological uh, archaeological um, um, archaeological uh, uh, finds from this site are preserved in the Muse, Museo di Trento, and then uh, other important sites are uh, La Vela. La Vela is an open air site in the Adige Valley bottom, uh, still under under study. Uh, with uh, different phases of occupation, uh, Mesolithic and uh, Neolithic occupations. And then there are several other uh, Neolithic sites. It depends if we are talking about the early or the middle and late Neolithic. So the evidence is quite rich in the valley. Mm. Okay, thanks. And there's one more question. Uh, are there many sites that have stratigraphy that preserves epigravetian and salvatarian phases in the alpine region apologies my pronunciation is all over don't the place worry. i've got the sun directly in my eyes oh don't worry <laughs> not worry uh, uh, so it, it, the, the question is if there are sites with both the late epigravetian and mesolithic occupation yeah yes yes there are not so many but there are uh, two main sites with both occupation phases. Are um, one is the uh, Biarto Rock Shelter, uh, with a publication in the 90s by Antonio Guerreschi, and uh, recently, uh, more recent publication by Bertolini et al. Uh, related to fauna remains and. Uh, Ornamental Beads in Quaternary International, uh, which is the proceeding of the conference on the Mesolite Conference. Uh, this site has a very uh, um, interstadial occupation uh, in the late Epigravetian, uh, and then uh, an early Mesolithic uh, occupation, Sovetarian occupation, in the Valley Bottom, in the Natizone Valley Bottom in Friuli, so farther east uh, from Mondeval. And then another very important site, uh, two other important sites are Soman Rock Shelter at uh, the entrance of the Adige Valley and La Cogola uh, Rock Shelter on uh, the Folgaria Plateau. So on, um, mm. on a high plateau around 1000 meters altitude published by Cusinato and Dalmeri uh, in Prehistoria Alpina. And uh, especially in this case, the, uh, the later Pigravetian has been published, not, not really uh, uh, the, the, the Sovetarian has, has indeed published uh, exhaustively yet. So, but three, these uh, three main sites uh, uh, show this continuity of occupation. Um, other sites, all the other sites of the Adige Valley, uh, in the other sites of the Adige Valley, the occupation starts in the Mesolithic only. And so there is no evidence of previous occupations. 
but the region is occupied, generally speaking, the region is occupied throughout the period. Brilliant. With, very a very, with a very progressive and very complex uh, patterns. I mean, because the first occupation in the late glacial starts around 70,000 uh, year in uh, the Lessini Plateau in Riparo Taliente. This is the earliest site where we have occupation um, when uh, still glaciers are present in the Adige Valley bottom. And then the go continues during uh, the inter interstadial phase with uh, wider... Um, presence of sites and then uh, throughout the Mesolithic, so there is an increase of uh, occupation of the area. Like if uh, people really have, dis have discovered this new uh, environment and explored uh, more, it's more and more. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'll ask one final question then, and then I think uh, we, can, we can probably close. Uh, so the, the question is, why do you think the uh, the research on the Mesolithic was so delayed in Italy? I think you said it was it started like really took a hold in the 1960s. Why was that so so late almost? Yeah, actually, it's it's okay. We we know that generally the the research of the Mesolithic started quite late because. Actually, um, even in France, I mean, the definition of the Sovietarian in the 30s and then the Castelnovian in the 60s, so quite a, of a late 50s, uh, quite a late phenomenon. Uh, the French people, I mean, the French people also relate to this aspect to the fact of the, the um, excavation techniques uh, as the actually the Mesolithic uh, uh, assemblages of this area, southern France and northern Italy, are very, really microlithic. And so, when uh, when uh, uh, the uh, tamisage in French, how do you say the um, uh, the use of uh, exploration techniques and then washing sediments with uh, I don't remember the name. How do you use how? What's the name of this? Uh, tool you use uh, to 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 wash and select uh, sediments. Um, sieve. Sieve. Oh, sorry, uh, tamisage. Okay, sieves was were not used, so there was lower visibility. And actually, there were there were um, um, other um, attempts to define the Mesolithic in Italy, uh, first by Blanc and then by Radmilli. But actually, what they defined was a very late Paleolithic at Arene Candide and in the sites of uh, the Fucino and uh, in the sites of, um, uh, of the, of the um, uh, Campania. Uh, they, they, they defined, at first, they defined the Mesolithic on an ecological basis. Uh, so they said, OK, um, we, we see new species. Uh, but actually, what they defined at that time are now is now considered as late uh, as a late uh, epigravation, and um, so possibly it's really the low visibility in terms of the, the very small uh, assemblages could be mm -hmm. the main reason. Uh, because as, as we know, uh, some uh, I mean at that time, uh, surface collections of local amateur were looking, looking mostly at uh, uh, lower Paleolithic, uh, like uh, Acheulean assemblages or middle Paleolithic Levallois technology. And uh, if we compare this to the small Mesolithic cores that uh, may, I mean, uh, have two, two centimeters length uh, or microliths, uh, which are really very small, uh, could not. So I, I think this could be uh, a reason why. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks again uh, for that really interesting and uh, informative talk. I've definitely learned a lot about the, uh, the Mesolithic of the Alpine region and uh, Northern Italy in general. And as I asked before last week, uh, perhaps it would be good if you could uh, maybe send one of us, maybe one, the, the list of, of references, and then he could ask the, uh, the guys at the the Institute to add that to the presentation and then people can go there for further information as well. And uh, I'll just end by saying that uh, the next online talk is the 12th of May and that's going to be the Neolithic occupation in Cyprus. So moving further southeast.
brilliant. Thanks very much. And Thanks. Juan, do you have any uh, clothing, closing remarks or anything? No, only say that uh, remember that the 12th of May, there is uh, the conference, the next conference. Uh, around the Neolithic transition in Cyprus uh, with the professor Jean Denis Vigne, uh, Francois Riguas. And until then, thank you for all. Thank you, Federica. I hope to see you soon. Thanks to you, Juan and uh, Harry, really very much. It was really a pleasure. Uh, and uh, I will be there for, uh, uh, and uh, it's a long time I don't see Jean-Denis and, uh, and I don't see Francois, so I will be happy to follow the next uh, seminars you have, you have organized this look okay. very interesting uh, program. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much.